Worship has the ability to change our emotions. We can be fearful, we can be angry, we can be frustrated. And when we begin to sing and worship God and sing the Word, those words become alive in us and they actually change our emotions. Hey everyone, I'm Julie Meyer and welcome to the show, Singing the Scriptures. We are going to be walking through the Psalms. And don't worry if you are not a singer, this show is for everyone. I have designed it so that it would be interactive, that we would start with a time of worship, that we would study the Psalm, that there would be a powerful prophetic prayer released over your life and that we would end in a time of soaking worship. So grab your Bible and come along with me as we learn this ancient form of breakthrough called singing the scriptures. And Holy Spirit, come like a everyone, welcome to Singing the Scriptures. Today we are going to sing from and talk about Psalm 5. And I have a challenge for you this week before coffee, before social media or phone calls or email. Can your first thought be about God? Can the first thing you do is have conversation to God? This is what David talks about in Psalm 5. So grab your Bible and let's sing and study Psalm 5. Thank you. 
Sarah, and I'm a part of Julie's Into the River worship community. My life can be busy and full of distractions. Imagine the joy and peace that we would feel if we surround ourselves with the constant worship of God. As a full-time working mom, this can be difficult, but now it's as easy as pushing a button. Into the River is a 24-7, never-ending, always-playing worship radio for you to take with you in your car, workplace, or home. Never leave God's presence and bring peace wherever life takes you. Join hundreds of other like-minded believers from all around the world. Find God's peace in an atmosphere of nonstop worship. Join us today and sign up at juliemeyer.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to Singing the Scriptures. I hope you enjoyed that time of worship singing from Psalm 5. I love that. I love Psalm 5. And I remember learning a song when I was young, just a young girl. Hear my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. I'm sure most of you can remember that song. What I love about singing the scripture is that when we actually sing these words, the word of God is alive, full of power. And when I began to sing in the morning when I rise, when I began to sing chapter 5, I literally began to wake up before the sun came out. But even more than that, I began to wake up and my first thought was about God. Just, I would wake up, I love you, Jesus. I love you, God. Just the minute I woke up, and I, I feel like the Word of God is so alive and powerful that when we begin to sing it, our bodies actually have follow through that we begin to live it and we begin to do it. And that was my personal testimony, just singing um, Psalm 5. So I, I love that. But let me, let's go through a little bit of Psalm 5 because there's an expectation in this Psalm that God hears our prayers and that God answers our prayers. So let's go through a couple of these scriptures. When David writes, O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. 
Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning, I bring my request to you and I expectantly wait. And then we actually see over here in verse 11, he writes, let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praise forever. And remember that the Psalms, they are actual songs that David wrote that he sang. It's as if he sang his prayers to God. And I feel like when you sing them, it tenderizes your heart. Psalm 5, David is writing and singing that in the morning he goes to God for his strength, for his confidence. And what he does is he lays out his prayer one by one. When he writes in verse 3, each morning I bring my request to you and expectantly wait. So David is saying, I will arrange my prayers. I'll put my cries in order. I'll lay them out on the altar. I will put my prayers in order and I will look up. I will look up to you, God. You are my King and my God, but I will also look out for the answer and expectantly wait. And I love that about David is that he's praying, but there's an expectancy. There's this groaning and a longing, but, but suddenly we see there's this expectancy and there's a watching for God. So David, he gets up in the morning and he prays, but then he begins to look and expect and watch. And that's why I want to encourage you to sing this psalm. I feel it is powerful. And if you need your faith to be enlarged, I'm telling you, Psalm 5 is a great psalm to sing and ask the Lord to give you that experience expectancy that you know that he hears your prayer, that he answers them. And can you do what David did and eagerly expect and begin to watch when you pray, begin to watch, begin to look around, begin to watch for God to answer your prayers one by one by one. And David, I feel, says it's so beautiful at the beginning of verse seven. And he says, because of your unfailing love, do you know that God has such unfailing love for you? And I want to pray this Psalm over you, that you have such an understanding of his love that never, ever fails for you, that there would be that expectancy in your heart and that knowledge that God is for you, but that he's going to answer each and every prayer. And Lord, I pray that you would just touch every listener right now and that you would touch them with the knowledge that you have an unfailing love for them. And I ask that you would remind them by your spirit that when they lay their prayers out in the morning to actually take a step back and watch and wait for God to answer each one. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul tells us in Colossians 3.16 to let the Word of Christ be fully alive in us as we teach and encourage one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Engaging with God in this way is the foundation of our online worship community called Into the River, and it is helping hundreds of others find personal breakthrough in their lives all around the world. I want to invite you to join Into the River today at juliemeyer.com. This is 
James Gall of God Encounters Ministries, and we are now going to pray read Psalm 5. Remember, sometimes we just literally pray the scriptures. At times, we turn them into petition and worship. And sometimes, we take them into declaration. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groanings. Heed the sound. Heed the sound. Listen to the groaning of my heart. Heed the sound of my cry for help. My King and my God, for to you I pray, and only to you do we pray. And we're asking for our lives, our families, our cities, our nations. And we're asking God that you would put your cry in us. Because unto you do we pray. In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice, so awaken us in the morning. Awaken us and give us the ear of a disciple. That's Psalm 50, verses 4 and 5. And in the morning I will order my prayer to you, and I will eagerly watch. And so we're asking still that you would raise up the ancient watch of the Lord for such a time as this. Verse 4. For you do, are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. No, no. No evil dwells within you. Of course, God, you're pure. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. Oh, they might seem like they do for a while, but no, not at the end of the matter. You hate all who do iniquity. You destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. But as for me, by your abundant loving kindness, I will enter your house. At your holy temple, I will bow in reverence to you. And so we're asking that you cleanse us from deceit and lying and shedding of innocent blood. And we ask upon our cities, our nations, and we cry out, God have mercy. And yet we say, God arise and let his enemies be scattered. But as for me, I'm not going to keep my eyes on evil. I'm not going to keep my eyes on the revival of evil, but rather I lift up my eyes into the hills from which comes my help. And in verse 7 it says, But as for me, by your abundant loving kindness, I will enter your house and at your holy temple I will bow in reverence to you. So though we have these pains and these needs and we identify with the needs of the nations, we put our gaze upon you and we come into your presence. And when we keep our gaze upon him, a song arises, joy arises, and we take refuge and we sing for joy. Verse 12, for it is you who blesses the righteous man, O Lord, you surround him with favor as a shield. I ask this for all those listening, watching, and learning to sing and to pray the Bible. I declare God is surrounding you with favor like a shield. Amen and amen. Thank you, James, for that amazing, powerful prayer over our lives. And now we're going to take our Bibles. We're going to sing the scriptures right from Psalm 5. Thank you. 
Show you a few examples of various psalms which Into the River members have sang to find personal breakthrough, just like King David. Each psalm is for you to soak or to play in your house or business, or for you to sing along. I will, I will praise you, I will worship you with all my Psalm 32. A psalm of David. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. When God came down, because he Joining Into the River today will give you immediate access to over 45 psalms prophetically sang for you to use in your own devotional life. In addition, Bible studies and live interactive classes with world-renowned leaders such as Stacy Campbell, James Gull, Sean Boltz, and many others. Into the River is constantly growing as we add a new psalm in class each month, plus weekly Bible studies. Join Into the River today at juliemeyer.com. Thank you for watching and joining us on Singing the Scriptures. And I encourage you all week to sing from Psalm 5. Just get it on the inside of you. And next week, join us as we sing and talk through Psalm 6. God bless. And holy